in this episode of UNC Dynasty. North Carolina Tar Heels will be taking on the Virginia Cavaliers. We are favored by ratings. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at recruiting for this week. And hopping into this game, North Carolina will be wearing their vintage away uniforms. And Virginia will be wearing orange jersey and orange pants with the home blue helmet. And actually, I'm just going to go with the navy pants. Jump into it, and as always, let's go heels. Hello everyone and welcome. We are surrounded by pageantry and tradition, and it's clear to see that college football will be at its best today. The kickoff team out there and ready to go. Here he comes from inside his own five. 
Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. And now we'll get a look at this offense for the first time today. These rivalry games can really get the blood pumping, and we'll see who can manage their emotions best early. Everyone's been waiting for this game, right? You know both of these teams have had this game circled all the way back to the beginning of the offseason, so you've got to be able to play under control. With passion, with energy, with hatred, because it's a rivalry game, but keep your emotions in check and making sure I'm controlling what I can control. He'll keep it himself. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Last time these two got together, it was a tight one, Jesse. Seems like every time these two teams play, the game just feels faster, right? Because it is a rivalry game. There's just a greater sense of urgency when we see these teams match up. Yeah, the fans feel it. They know it. There's so much to it. They think about it all year long. We can talk about the next game on the schedule. They're always looking forward to this one. They'll ride the hot hand. And they'll wrestle him to the ground after a short game. And these defensive tackles just eat people. They swallow human beings when you get near them. They're so big, so strong. Those guys, those running backs come in, they just need a mitt. They put one mitt on a running back, and he usually falls to the ground just because of their sheer mass and strength. Third and short coming here right from the midfield strike. Dropping back, it's Calandria. Makes the grab on the left. They've got it inside the 40 and the 39 as they pick up the first down. And now a fresh set of downs for this offense. Give to the back. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And that play shows you really what this defense is about. It's a difficult one to attack. They're really good. One of the best in the country. They come at you from all angles. So I, I'm interested to watch. How do you mix up the play calling? How do you keep the defense off balance? Because they are a good one. Now the eighth play of the opening drive, but this time facing third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. He'll try to do it himself. And he gets it just beyond the line of scrimmage before he gets down. It's fourth down, and they'll try the field goal. He's going to reach for a long one, a 52-yard attempt. And this one splits the uprights. And the first points of the day come on that field goal. This is a team that really prides themselves on starting fast. We've seen that before, and here they are playing at home today. Nice job on the opening drop. Lots of poise, good emotion. They don't get the touchdown they would have liked, but they kick a nice field goal. They've got the lead. Head coach has to be happy with that. That ball skips through the end zone. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 25-yard line. Here are our impact players for this game, and it goes beyond executing an assignment to make an impact in the game. Yeah, obviously we were talking to both coaching staffs this week, and we asked them who needs to step up and play while they immediately pointed to these guys right here. They are the key for their respective teams. Yeah, and they don't always show up in the box score, but these are the guys are the leaders. These are the guys getting everybody organized and have to play well for their team to succeed. Trying to find his man on first down. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. Really important for a ranked team going into a hostile environment like this one. Not to give the underdog reason to believe. Yes, reason to believe. And don't give the fans reason to get jacked up and excited. Come out early. Be in a business mode mindset. You gotta start fast. You gotta have a sense of urgency. You cannot come sleepwalking into an environment like this because if you do and you make some mistakes, this crowd will bounce on you and seize momentum. Yeah, this coaching staff, they're getting this offensive line lathered up and into a rhythm. Now they're letting them drive off the ball on first down on these running plays, and they're getting chunks of yardage. And the defense will corral the quarterback, and down he goes at midfield. Trying to move the sticks on third down. Looking to pass. It's Chriswell trying to get to him. Picks up the first down and gets down to avoid contact. And they've swapped ends of the field and we'll get it going in the second. 
Back at it to open the quarter with this first down play. Takes a handoff. It's Barlow. And that's a very productive first down play of bringing up second and three. Offense walks through the line for play number seven of the drive. Running to the left. Tackle is made after the first down. And that's all you want, right? You want that first down. Uh, understand the situation. Understand I got to get north and south. Get a first down. Get a new set of downs. Pocket starts to collapse. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. What a great job by this defense setting the tone early. In the first half, they've been hitting the quarterback early and often. Make him feel uncomfortable. Make him feel that pressure. Keep getting him on the ground. That's why they built the lead. Ball spotted at the 27. They're facing a third and long to try to keep their hopes of a touchdown alive. Fires to the right. And it's incomplete on third down. Best job by the defense. They're mixing up their look. They're third and long in field goal range. They go zone coverage. So everybody on the back end has the eye on the quarterback. And they're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. It's good. And that's going to tie it up. And we're all square as he's set to kick it away. And they thought about a return, then thought better of it. They'll bring it out to the 25. The drive starts from their own 25-yard line. They'll leave it with him. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Not what they had in mind to start this drive. Here comes second and 13. Power football with the run. And he'll step out of bounds after a very productive play. Offensive linemen love to run power. Why? You run power. You run power. Then you can play action. You don't want that defense to be sitting there saying, it's a pass, it's a pass, having to pass block every play. You've got to keep defenses off balance. And the quarterback is knocked down back at the 13. They bring the punter onto the field now. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. First one is away, and boy, did he put in work in that loss last week, kicking it five times. He gets a block. The solid return there offsets some of the punt yardage and really sets up this offense nicely. A first down for the offense. Used the play fake, now to throw. And the pass is incomplete, but the flag flies, and there was a lot of early contact there. <laughs> And the defender just way too handsy on that last play. You could see all the contact as the ball was in the air. He simply can't do it, and the referee's caught. And off from the shotgun. And they'll stop him just short of the first down, just inches away from moving the sticks. Line getting set on second down. They'll try the run. Hard running there. And he's tripped up, but not before picking up the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. They'll throw it on first down. Unloads to the wideout. Got him downfield. Makes the easy catch and weaves his way into the end zone for a touchdown. One of the reasons this offense is so exciting to watch, they've got guys that are dangerous after the catch. And if this quarterback gets through his progression, David, gets you in stride, these guys will take it to the house. Man, it's your job to do the rest, right? You hit me in stride where I don't have to stop running, I don't have to break down. It makes it so easy, the connection between quarterback and wide receiver. You can tell this is a good one, and that's why they got six on that play. And the extra point is true, and they're on top by seven. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. And they desperately wanted to attempt a return, but decided not to. Instead, they'll take the touchback. So guys, we'll get another look at this offense. 
The last time we saw this offense, we had to look quick. It was a three and out, Jesse. They just had no rhythm in that last drive. So someone's going to have to step up and make a play, David, and get this thing going. Yeah, let's find some juice. Find your guy. Find those plays that you know you can run inside out, forward, backwards. Get some first downs. Get some positive momentum. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. The clock has reached the two-minute mark, and they have a chance to at least cut into this lead before the break. Let's see what they've got. To throw, it's Calandria. Just a solid stop by this sophomore. IndyCar tempo as they head to the line for this third down play. Clock running. From the gun, wants to pass. And the Heat will get home, and the quarterback goes down at the 17. The clock will stop with this timeout from the offense. They'll get a chance to regroup on the sideline. The punt team makes its way onto the field. Three and out, they got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. And the returner runs out of real estate as he goes down. Here comes the offense on first down. He'll start this drive firing. That is just a sideline credit. Throw, catch, toe drag, everything you want. Now from the 40, it's first and 10. Quarterback checking off. Comes out throwing on first down. And it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. After the misfire, now on second down. He's looking to throw. How about that play to get a hand in there and force the incompletion? Love the competitive nature by the defender on that play. That's just a 50-50 ball, and that defender swatted it away. Setting up the screen. They finally get him stopped, but what a good job by that front wall to set up the screen and create some lanes for their running back. He'll just keep slinging it. Trying to escape and get it himself. I think he did a really good job, first of all, keeping his eyes down. You can see he wanted to throw the football. But when it's not there, don't force it. Tuck it down. Get some positive yards. A shot toward the end zone. And good coverage there to knock it away and deny the score. Couldn't pick it up on second down. Now they need a couple on third down. Looking to throw for it. With the catch, it's Hampton. Really nice job there of the quarterback reading coverage. He knew exactly where to go with the football and at what exact time. The timing could not have been better. They get the completion on third down, setting up first and goal. Finds his big tight end. Steps into the end zone for a touchdown. And I tell you what, this is part of the field. Once you start getting into the red zone and the field shrinks, you've got more big bodies on the field. The running threat is real. Tight ends come on the field, and what happens? Run a little play action off of it, get it to the big fella. Nice plucking it out of the sky, getting the touchdown. They got the late touchdown on the board now, about to kick it away and hoping the defense can keep them from answering. And he's going to try to return this one. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. Okay, so here comes the offense returning to the field. Back to throw. It's Calandria. Just a short pass to the tight end. And they're able to force him out of bounds after a short pickup. They've got a chance to get out from their own end. Second and six from the 18. He's looking to throw quickly to the tight end and he might be known for run fits but that was a sure and heavy tackle on the tight end timeout is called and it's the defense wanting to make sure that everyone's on the same page for this big down on the run it's pace a little more space open up that playbook even more as they pick up the first down out to the 30 
There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. They'll snap this one from the 30 on first and 10. A solid pickup there before the defense is able to make the stop. There's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. Wants to throw on second down. They're bringing heat. He's going to take off. And the defense makes the tackle, and that ought to do it here in the first half. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Thanks so much, guys, and I need not tell you, rivalry games always bring out a ton of emotion, and no surprise, we saw just that in the first half today. And I get it, a lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. Thanks for that halftime report, Kevin. All lined up and ready to go for a great second half ahead. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic. There's a long and storied history of great games between these two rivals, and this chapter adds another to that legacy. Really Im impressed by the poise by the winning team. And well. that's a North Carolina Tar Heels win. Goalie to 12, 73 completion percentage, four touchdowns, four. 169 yards, I believe that's had. Sometimes get overzealous. Sometimes you get too many penalties. It's hard to rein in your yeah, final score of 31 to 6. Carolina's defense played great, only allowing two field goals. A total of five first downs. Presentation of EA Sports College Football. Hampton 13 for 55. No touchdowns. Bryson Nesbitt. Two receptions, both for touchdowns, and nine yards. Kobe Faisor had 31 yards in the touchdown. J.J. Jones had a three-yard reception for a touchdown. On the defensive end, Atkinson and Ritzy had a sack. No interceptions. One forced fumble by Elijah Hovey. And two fumble recoveries from Huzzy. Back of a game from him. Advancing the wheat. We'll be taking on Florida State this upcoming week in Tallahassee. Looking at last week's scores. Andy kept it close with Texas. The Georgia Tech downs Virginia Tech. Nebraska downs Ohio State. This week's best games. Clemson and Louisville. Carolina, Florida State. Oregon, Michigan. Florida, Georgia. Kentucky, Tennessee. Duke, Miami, mm -hmm. Ohio State in Penn State, and of course, USC in Washington.
Taking a look at this week's top 25. Carolina will be ranked 7th. Carolina, NC State ranked 9th. And this is the first week of the CFP rankings. <clears throat> Take a look at conference standings. Clemson has this by a game. Looking at the Heisman watch. Surprised to see, to not see him already on in here. Looking at the season stats, Jacoby Criswell, 12 touchdowns, 3 interceptions for 1,000 yards. Hampton at 700 yards, 9 touchdowns. And no, only one receiver over 250 yards. Two with four touchdowns. Our sack leader is Kamon Rucker with eight and a half. Interception leader, uh, interception leader is Huzzy with three. Kamon Rucker, the tackle for loss leader. And our touchdown leader is a Huzzy and Allen, both with pick sixes. And that'll be it for this week's UNC Dynasty. As always, let's go Heels.